So we'll now call the April 26th meeting of the uh, Arlington Redevelopment Board to order. This open meeting of the Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. For this meeting, the redevelopment board is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. I will now uh, identify our, um, that all of our members are here by taking a roll call. We'll start with Ken Lau. Present. Uh, Jean Benson. Present. Melissa Tintakalis. Present. And I am Rachel Zemberry. I'm here as well. And it looks like we have two members of the uh, Department of Planning here, Jenny Wright. Present. And Kelly Linema. Here. Great. Do we have any other members of the department joining us this evening, Jenny? No, we do not. Okay, Thank you. Great. Thank you. So before we begin, I'll just note that uh, we do have a, a time frame that we need to stick to this evening. So we'll try and keep everything moving. Um, we need to wrap up promptly at 7.55 p.m. as town, the first night of town meeting is this evening. I'll also mention that uh, we received notice today that the um, applicant, one of the applicants for our May 3rd uh, meeting has asked for an extension. Jenny, if you just want to um, recap, I believe that was from attorney Anessi. Yes, attorney Bob Anessi for the applicant of uh, 190 and 192 to 200 Mass Ave. Uh, the project that we had a hearing that started last month and it was continued to May 3rd. They have uh, requested a continuation. We'll talk about that next Monday night. Um, in the event that anything else comes up, we'll keep our meeting for next Monday night for now. Great. So I don't have anything further to say. That's fine. That's great, Jenny. I just wanted to confirm that we would still um, be holding that meeting on May 3rd as of now. Okay, um, let's see. Barring any other further announcements, we will move to open docket 3654, 1050 Massachusetts Avenue, uh, which is a, um, the, the public hearing for a uh, new Dell's uh, Lemonade. And uh, do we have the applicant here with us this evening? Yes. Yes. Great. Great, perfect. So if you um, wouldn't mind uh, introducing yourselves, you'll have five minutes for up to five minutes for a presentation to the board and then we'll ask you any questions that we have before turning it open to public comments. Awesome, thank you. So my name is Paul Piatelli Jr. Uh, my parents, Paul and Kathleen, are also in the Zoom. Um, we have been Dell's franchisees since 2003. If you're not familiar with Dell's, it's an all natural soft frozen lemonade. Um, in addition to that, we'll be bringing along ice cream and some fair food such as pretzels, nachos, and things like that, quick eats. So the idea behind our shop is to um, change the front layout of the um, existing windows and make them a takeout only. Um, I think you can kind of see by the pictures there. Um, but that at, at this particular location, it would be takeout eat only, um, but right on, right next to the, the bike path, close to the schools, um, a very active community. And with the times that we are now, um, we thought it'd be great to, you know, keep it as a takeout only so people can continue their fast transactions. Um, so yeah, that's it. Mom, dad, I don't know if you had anything else to say. Um, we're glad to be in Arlington. We had a meeting with the selectmen of, you know, two months, months ago, and uh, we're looking forward to getting getting started. Um, I think the the windows will uh, look very nice in the 
on the address and people will be uh, drawn to the neighborhood. And um, that's it. We've been doing it for a long time and we're in Boston, we're in Fenway Park. We're gonna be going to the Worcester Red Sox once they uh, get the fans back and our world is, gets back together. Um, so we're really looking to expand and we thought Arlington would be a great spot. So that's what we have. Great. Hopefully you like us. Wonderful, thank you so much. We're thrilled um, to, to have you come to Arlington and I'm sure that uh, some of the, my colleagues on the board will have a few questions for you about the, the signage and the, and the windows that you've proposed. So Ken, um, if I could start with you. Sure, thank you, Rachel. Um, the, the windows you proposed, are they vinyl windows? Um, it would be vinyl, um, yes. The like they stickery like, vinyls. They look like residential vinyl windows that you, you're going to uh, install into a, maybe a wood panel that's going to be slotted into the storefront. Is that your intention? So they're double hung windows. Yes, it's uh, our... Sorry, I just hit a button. Um, that was the specialist at Almont Glass. Um, he proposed those would be the best windows for that current location. Um, I think they look similar to the ones that the general public would have in, at their homes. Yes, uh, they would go up and down. Um, if that answers your questions, so the two windows on the way left would be the, the takeout windows. Yeah. Um... I'm not finding that uh, selection of windows in your system here um, going with the character of, uh, of the rest of the storefronts in, uh, uh, in, our, in our neighborhoods here. And, and I was wondering, would you be willing to change that out to something a little more commercial that may be uh, aluminum, not a residential window that's stuck in there? Would you, would you guys be interested in entertaining that idea and maybe going down to one window Instead of two, um, we're, we're uh, yeah. we'll do whatever it takes to uh, appease the look. Um, the idea of the two windows is one to uh, order and one to pick up. Oh, I'm uh -huh. not as I'm not as hung up on the number of windows. I'm just um, uh, um, have issues with the type of window. If you if you guys were to select a more commercial. Um, aluminum window that matches the storefront a little more, I think that would be a much, much better choice. Um, that's one issue I have right now. And the other issue I have is um, um, your uh, signage. You, you seem to have letters on every single window that's possible that you have there. And um, that's not that's not what we have typically in our um, re uh, res our uh, retail uh, district there. You, you don't see very much like that. That's not our standard that we want to go with. Uh, I was wondering, would you uh, also be willing to scale that back some? Because I can't, I can't see approving what you have here right now. Um, just, just too much uh, graphics there. Yes, absolutely. We'll change whatever. You, we will change whoever to make it well, work with you guys. Remember inside the building on the wall. I mean. Jen, about, Jen, do you have um, signage standards that we can maybe uh, provide them that they, that they can look at? Uh, sure. I mean, also my my memo to the board indicates that they're far beyond, far exceeding the amount of signage that you would typically see on, you know, it's on every single panel, as you said. Um, I hadn't thought about the residential style of those windows um, and how they're, I, all I saw was that they were operable. Um, then I, I can see why that that is important, but um, yes, they, uh, Paul and I have corresponded and he had corresponded with um, Aaron in the past, I believe. Okay. So I will, I can of course follow up on that. All right, and uh, I know, I know that some pictures show that blade sign being used in some window and some of your uh, uh, presentations don't show that blade sign being used. Is it good, is your intention to use the blade sign? Yes. Okay, that would definitely count as part of your signage uh, on your front there. Okay, and I think that's a good that's a good thing uh, take advantage of that blade sign, uh, but I can't see um, 
approving what you have here right now with the vinyl window and uh, the graphics and all the uh, and all the windows right now. Okay, uh, I love the idea of having a a, a lemonade slash ice cream stand there, and, and I support you wholeheartedly. Just the, uh, the graphics you have right there right now, um, I can't seem to support right now. Okay, that's my opinion. Thanks, Ken. Um, well, and we'll be able to give you a, a little bit more guidance on specifically how we, we might suggest that you pull back on some of the graphics. Um, but Gene, I'll go to you next. Thank you. I, I pretty much agree with everything Mr. Lyle had to say. I think I would expect the windows to look like commercial windows and more like what is available in the neighborhood and not um, um, what look like residential windows. I, I also don't care if they're one or two, but I think this is not uh, comporting with uh, the neighborhood. Um, yeah, the silence is just much, much, much too extensive. I think it has to be pulled back so that it um, meets the town sign bylaw requirements. I think if I remember correctly that the projecting sign is not permitted in the B2 zone. Is that right, Jenny? That's correct. basically none of none of the signage on this entire block is conforming anymore. So so I cannot <laughs> see I can't see approving the projecting sign. I think having you know a sign over the windows um, um, would be a more appropriate thing. We can't have people who have a sign take it down, but I can't see putting adding another projecting sign. They when, they can't um, add it, Jean. May I, Rachel? Please, Jenny. Yeah, they are absolutely allowed to change out the sign face. That that counts as one sign. The other signage is allowed, but not the amount of coverage. So if they are going to actually install a new blade sign or projected sign, projecting sign, <laughs> right? Yes, that's yes. the terminology in the yeah, projecting, projecting sign. sign. Yeah. Um, that would mean that would not be allowed. It's an existing non-conforming sign. All they can do is switch out the face, so they're allowed to do that, Gene. But they can also have the 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 signage on the window, but more like the one that's next to it. Actually, at ten forty eight is a good example because it's not fully saturating every single window. Um, it's a percentage of the window coverage. Yeah, I, um, I hope that they might work with um, someone in planning and community development to come up with how they can put signage up that would meet the requirements of the bylaw. The, the, the only other um, request I have has to do with um, 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 a bike, bike park, bicycle parking and a bike rack. And um, I, I did read what you say and there's obviously no place on the property to put a bike rack, but I would hope that they could work with um, the town DPW and see if there was a place to put a bike rack. I think there may be a place to put it between some of the trees over there. And I think that would be appropriate if they could work that out with the town. I like the concept. I like the idea of having this here. I think with the more appropriate signage, the more appropriate windows, a place to put in, um, a bike rack that meets the town's bike rack standards, this would be a great thing for the street and the town. That's it. Thank you, Jean. Melissa? Hey. Um, well, thank you for bringing this to Arlington. I think it's exciting in that um, for this area, I think the kind of pickup window idea has, um, a great potential for the street activation that brings a little bit more vitality to this area. So, um, but I think in terms of the design, it's hard for this building um, to push it a little bit, but I'm going to press you guys to step up the game and step up the game and on the design piece of things. Um, I guess my first question is uh, the, are the windows opaque? Are they designed to be opaque? In this image, they do look like that. The the black, are they colored? Oh, so th that was just for us to like show you that the windows are there. Um, they would match the black um, that's on the other windows as well. 
Okay. They're transparent. They're transparent. They are windows. transparent. Okay. Yes. And would the pickup window, I know mm -hmm. kind of you're we responding a little bit to COVID, but is that permanent? We were and looking that way, yes. The, our okay. whole design is based off takeout only. Um, okay. Just the, just the amount of space we have in that building alone okay. allows us. We're thinking just for takeout. Okay. Um, and you said you talked to the Board of Selectmen. Um, was that on kind of conceptually or was that for a sidewalk permit or what was that for? He was just referencing that we had gotten approved by the Board of Selectmen to open our business here. Okay. Um, but it, nothing outside of that. Okay. Um, yeah, because they think, it, you know, in terms of, you know, the sidewalk being a space, you know, I I, you know, I was suggesting maybe that to uh, Jenny that we could explore how we can enhance the public realm, which is maybe outside the purview of this board, um, but seeking, you know, working with our economic development um, staff, Jenny, have they, maybe I should ask the applicant, have you worked with your property owner, the own, person who owns the whole building on any storefront enhancement? for the whole building? Have they talked about that? We asked them to paint the building and they agreed they'll do that um, this summer. But outside of that, no. But they've been pretty receptive as far as what we asked. So um, I don't know if you had any recommendations on what we should do. Right, well, I did a quick, just if you do a quick Google of, you know, pick up window design, you can get some really interesting, you know, concepts that would, I would say raise the bar for the design on this building. And I think if you start to do that, you could be kind of a leader on this kind of, in this strip mall, you know, you would be the, the role model, if you will, if you can step right. up the design on that. Um, I'm thinking that I'd probably have to give some more specific directions, probably through an email or through Jenny. Is that right, Jenny? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I could share that with some concept ideas and maybe some materials that could be um, possible for that, because I agree with the residential windows, um, probably not a fit, and it has a lot of potential to be a kind of a cool space, and that's what I'd like to kind of push you guys a little bit to see if we can set the bar. Oh, we, we will do whatever it takes to open it up. It's just that our season is short and we, we would love to um, get a little help from you guys to um, let us possibly get the uh, building permit so we can start the build out in the store so we can get open as soon as possible. Um, but we will definitely pick it up and make this the best looking building storefront in the area, <laughs> whatever it takes. But you, Paul Sr. We just need, you know, I mean, time's running out. We're going to be out of business before we can open if we don't get So is going. it closed so, seasonally? Yes, is, we, right? we usually open mid-March until October, depending upon the weather. And we close for the winter. OK. Are you saying that this, sorry, you're saying this storefront will be closed uh, during the winter time? We'd love to keep it open, but people aren't crazy about coming to get frozen lemonade in the winter. Um, and hopefully they'll come and get our ice cream, but we'd love to stay open. We have to pay rent 12 months a year. Um, we have uh, a retail store in North Attleboro, Mass where we, we do this and it's successful. Great, so. thanks for the clarification. Well, Melissa, did you have anything else? Any other uh, comments or questions before we move, up, move on? Not at this point. Okay, so I'll just give you um, a couple of, of more specifics. I, I agree with the comments that my, my colleagues made. Um, I think that you know the the double hung concept. I think is is fine as long as you can can move that to as Ken was saying a commercial aluminum uh, window. In terms of reducing some of the signage, if I could make a few suggestions, specific suggestions Please. for you. 
Sure. So where you have the, the food text on the upper windows, I would remove, remove that. Um, I think that would go a long way. I, I certainly understand why you have pickup order and, and menu included on, on those windows. There are um, you know, directions obviously for your, for your customers. That's yeah. fine. I would take out the, um, the web address and the Instagram on the windows, especially again, if these are, are to be opened um, you know, most of the time when, when, you're, when you're in business. I don't think that those get you anything and that will help you get towards the um, no greater than 25% coverage on your windows. Okay. Um, I, I think too, if we look on the door here, um, I think, you know, it, it's great to have your hours of operation. Um, where you have the, it looks like the, the two logos for, I'm assuming that's your pretzel provider and one of your other, um, one of your other providers as well. If you could combine that on the menu board, I think that again would, would be better. And perhaps um, we, we need to look at reducing, again, you need to look at what, the, what gets you to 25% coverage in this particular um, glazing area. So you may need to reduce the size of the, of the logo here. Um, Lemonade, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. In terms of the menu board, I think you have a, it's unique here, right? Because you are, you, you don't have any other way to display your, your menu board. Um, I, I think just, I, I understand and could, um, could certainly get behind if we remove some of the other signage, um, providing a, um, an exception to, to what we require here so that you can have the menu board there. But I'd, I'd ask you just, just to look at scale and try and make sure that you reduce that um, as much as possible. So we do have some visibility in there. Um, and you know the other thing that people do at times is say, well, rather than affix the, the menu board to the actual window itself, they'll actually hang it slightly behind the window as well. And that way it's not actually signage on the on the, the glazing itself. And quite frankly, that might actually be easier to, for you if you want to change your menu items or you want to um, you know you 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 want to change pricing or something like that rather than having to deal with the vinyl, it, it might actually wind up being easier for you. So if you could look at that suggestion as well. Does the town allow like an A-frame signage so we could put the menu on that on the outside, outside. and you know, I'd have to go back and look at the. They they can do that. They yeah. can use an A-frame sign. I think that that's what the ice cream shop in the Heights does as well. I think that they do theirs in a in a temporary um, way that they bring in and out as well. So that might be another great great way for you to again um, meet the requirements without blocking out that entire window. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, any other? Questions or comments from the board before I open this up for public comment? Okay. Um, so with that, I will uh, open open this up to public comment. Any member of the public wishing to speak, please raise your hand. Um, I will call on you in the order that hands are raised. Please note that you will have three up to three minutes to speak and please identify yourself by your first, last name and address. We will start with Don Seltzer. Thank you, Don Seltzer, Irving Street. I just have a question for planning. Does the town ever provide um, bench seating along business blocks such as this? Jenny, would you be able to answer that question? I I believe that's more of a question for the select board. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely more of a question for the select board or the Department of Public Works. Um, I think it's a good point. I don't think that there's any seating on this block at all, basically, nothing. Um, and what we've talked about with this applicant is figuring out a way for them to bring either cafe seating, although there's not a ton of space in front of this business either, as well as sidewalk, sort of nap, making it uh, easier to navigate for everybody. Um, but we also talked about potentially a parklet. So there might be other ways to do it, but uh, benches are not, uh, it's a possibility. It's something we can also talk about with the select board. And the second question, um, are awnings allowed? They're actually, this entire, this entire block used to have an awning on it. <laughs> it, was, it was removed in the 1980s. 
the whole block was a giant awning. Um, so I suppose you could, they, they, it used to be like an operable awning, like some of the ones in, um, I think there's still some in Arlington Center and, and other places as well. Um, so it, it, it would have to go through a whole process, but it had been there previously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seltzer. Are there any other members of the public who have questions or comments? Visually, I don't see any hands raised. Okay, seeing none, we will close public comments. Um, let's see, so I think we have, we have two options here. We could, um, and I'll throw this out to the board, we could discuss whether or not we would um, be willing to, with this specific direction on changing the, the type of window and um, some of the specific direction on reducing the amount of signage, be willing to approve this, this permit or this, um, this docket this evening. Um, with the uh, caveat that it's to be uh, that the final um, final design and signage within the parameters we've discussed would be approved by uh, the department, or we could ask the applicant to uh, return again. I'm certainly sensitive to the uh, short short um, window of their their primary um, their primary season, but I also Note that we want to ensure that the these two categories of specific comments are addressed. So um, I'll ask the board members their their preferences, and we'll start with uh, Ken. I certainly would like to encourage this business and get them open as soon as we can. I'm just um, I'm I'm kind of on the fence right now, uh, just because. Um, what they have right now is so far off what we normally accept. It's, it, I don't believe it's a minor tweak. Uh, it's, well, no, we, we, will, we will get the industrial takeout windows and we will take the menu to the, the, the windows to 25%. We weren't aware of this and now we are and we'll make it right. Okay. We'll make it right before we can open. And we'll definitely, we're gonna get on this tomorrow. Um, well, uh, you seem like a, uh, an honest gentleman that I can take your word for it and I will, I will say, okay, fine. I think I am fine with that. I appreciate that and I will prove you right. And the only <laughs> thing I would like to also add is I like to encourage you to maybe stay open during the winter time. I, I really don't like to see a dark space. If you can stay we, open, that would be great. We will, we will, we'll, we'll give it our best shot. No doubt about it. Yeah, Believe nice. me, because I'm paying rent yep. and uh, nothing coming in, it, it hurts. So any dollars we can make is a good thing. Yeah, maybe some hot soup or something like that, you know, I don't know. That's, that's right. You know, coffee maybe, I don't, you know, a chocolate or we'll, we'll get, we've been talking about this. Okay. So yeah. I, I, come on down, we'll work it out. Thank you. So, Rachel, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, say okay to go ahead and approve this with, uh, um, on my opinion, okay, that uh, and they'll work out the details with Jenny. Okay, uh, Jean. I I would start by asking Jenny if she thinks, on the basis of this discussion, she has enough direction to know what we would find acceptable if she were, if we were to delegate this to her. I think I do. Um, I sort of, I, I, I can summarize if it would be helpful at this point. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I think the first thing is sort of the transparency of the windows. I, mean, I, I realize we're looking at something that's not transparent, but we need the transparency in the windows. There's actually another, um, I think it's a, a doctor's office on the corner where they did a similar thing, blocking out windows. We, we don't want blocked out windows on Mass Ave. Um, so, so that's really important. That's number one. Number two is the residential window choice needs to change to uh, double hung 
commercial aluminum style windows. And it sounds like two is okay as long as you utilize that material instead of what you've decided here. Um, and then to remove all of the text from the transoms above the windows, um, to remove the web addresses from the operable windows, to move the logos that are on the bottom panel of the door to the menu board, um, and to shrink the menu board quite a bit um, if you decide to use the menu board. The other option that was provided was to hang the menu behind the window. Um, you, do, you did build out sort of a counter behind there, so maybe that is a possibility. Alternatively would be the A-frame board. Um, so there's, there's a couple of options about how to display the menu. The other thing, by the way, would be a, a, uh, having like a QR code. A lot of places are doing that now where you just put your phone over the code and it brings you to the menu options. And then you can even pay that way. It's all the touchless um, experience. That's a good um, and then the last thing is the, uh, you know, sort of the outside of the realm of the board. But when we talk to the select board at some point in the future is the, the seating um, issue, whether it's cafe or benches or just in general improvements. Um, and then also the uh, potential for a bike rack being installed somewhere on this block. Um, and then lastly, um, the hours that you would be able to stay open potentially through the seasons rather than focusing on one season. So that's, that's what I heard. That's everything that was on my list as well. Yeah, I think, I think that makes sense. I think if we do delegate this to the staff, they should be able to um, do this with the proviso that if the staff feels that they haven't reached an agreement with um, the applicant, it would have to come back to the redevelopment board um, for any other changes. And yeah, so that's fine. With the bicycle thing, I think it would be good um, for them to consult with DPW and if DPW can find you know, a space on the sidewalk, then they would, you know, supply and have the an appropriate bicycle rack installed. But yeah, that sounds good. With those um, provisos, I'm okay with going ahead with this now. Great, thank you, Jean. Melissa. Um. Yes, I mean, I think my my concern is trying to dress this up so it does kind of not only attract kind of the audience that you want and then kind of has the potential to go on beyond that season. Um, the awning that was mentioned by Don Sulcer, you, you can imagine like a really vivid yellow green awning that brings attention to the space. Maybe a small counter that's below the um, pickup order window um, that kind of makes it more inviting and engaging. I think there needs to be um, Maybe it's a public-private partnership with the property owner if we explore um, enhancements to the sidewalk because I feel like the sidewalk then becomes your de facto interior space. And I wanna make sure that it's clean and it's welcoming and it's not just there left for, you know, public works to, you know, worry about. Um, so those things are on my mind as we kind of think about how the interaction with um, kind of a pickup window would work, especially in this area, because as you know, the building hasn't been painted and it needs to be kind of dressed up. So if people kind of treat it like it's a junky area, trash will collect and it'll just, you know, kind of be a vicious circle. So, you know, that's kind of why I said you have to kind of be the model and level up to like new design. Um, that said, I leave it in Jenny. I trust <laughs> Jenny and her team can uh, bring us there. But Paul Jr., I would recommend just doing a Google on the new designs around pickup windows. There's a, a lot of cool stuff out there. And I think you can kind of be a leader here. Okay. Absolutely. Thank can you. I just, can I just mention one thing that I hadn't thought of till Melissa mentioned it? Go ahead, Gene. Trash receptacles. Who's going to supply them? Who's going to empty them? You know, I think if that's their responsibility. We, we were planning on putting uh, barrels outside with covers and we'd be emptying them on a daily basis. Yeah, so that probably needs to go into the permit as a condition. 
Okay. Just writing that down, Jean. Okay. Any other um, questions or comments from the from the board? Um, All right. Sorry. Just I, I did talk to Andrina's Pizza, and they were kind of enthusiastic about Dell's coming um, because they think that they could kind of bring a complementary business. So I thought that was a positive for the area and not all of the businesses along that might think that way. Um, but I think um, I thought that was kind of a nice kind of solidarity there that can be built. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, so I think that we had some some good comments here. Jenny summarized um, Jenny summarized them earlier. I think to that we would just add the caveat of um, the applicant uh, providing trash barrels, which will be um, emptied daily. Um, is there a motion from the board to approve uh, this docket? Uh, with the conditions as uh, as previously stated. So motion. Is there a second? I'll second. second. We'll give that one to Gina. I think I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> All well. right. We'll take a roll call vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Congratulations. And I uh, look forward to seeing what you work through with uh, Kelly and, and Jenny and the team in the planning department. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck to you guys. Thank you. Good Good look forward you. to you opening. All right. So with that, we will uh, close docket number 3654. And we will open agenda item number two, which is a substitute motion for article 35. And I will turn that over to either uh, Jenny or Kelly, I'm not sure which one of you was planning on speaking to that item. It's just me. Um, yeah. And it's just, uh, this was just an opportunity for the board, because we don't really have many opportunities to talk about substitute motions on any of our articles. And this is one that I thought, um, well, this is the only one, and I wanted to bring it up. There are actually a couple of other substitute motions, but they're just to reverse the no action votes. Uh, this one has more substantive content, so I thought that it might be helpful for the board to have an opportunity to discuss it if it so desires. Um, also, the person who uh, submitted that substitute motion is present, um, so uh, she may want to say something, Kristen Anderson. I'm just going to bring it up on the screen. I also have our, you know, just if anybody needs a refresher, I can bring up, obviously, the, the report to town meeting. Um, we are close on time, so I'll just Put that out there. If we can't get to the meeting minutes, I think that's okay. We'll defer. Okay. Great. So, um, Kristen, I'll just see again because Jenny included the substitute motion that you um, proposed in the agenda items. If you wanted to take, and again, we are short on time, so I'm going to apologize, but if you wanted to take a minute or two and just recap what it is that you propose, that would be great. And then I'll open it up to the board for any questions. I'll, I'll just note, I, I didn't tell Kristen that she had to talk. No, to talk. you don't have to. I, I'm, just, like to. I'm just letting you know Thank you. Um, that she was here, but thank you. Well, Kristen, talk, I'll leave it totally up to, you. Up to her. Uh, all right, I'll speak for a, a quick moment. My name is Kristen Anderson. I live at uh, 12 Upland Road West. And I'm a town meeting member and I'm presenting, I'm, I'm sponsoring um, an amendment to Article 35. Um, I run a business in um, the industrial zone in the uh, Gold's Gym lot in a building behind Gold's Gym. And so I come to town meeting um, also with the perspective of uh, someone who's trying to run a business, small business in town. Um, and uh, I was, uh, I, I think the, the best way to say it is I was fairly appalled by the um, mention of artists' residential space in the industrial zone because um, I have also um, spent over 11 years of my life living in artist uh, uh, live workspace in the greater Boston area. And I can tell you um, without, uh, with complete certainty that um, artists 
get pushed out of buildings by development. And um, they, and it's happening even in Arlington right now um, in the mill building behind my rack. And I'm trying to help those artists actually to get studio space. So, um, and, and I've spoken um, also to the Arlington um, Arts and uh, Council for Arts and Culture um, about this and explained um, my position on it. But the, the larger issue here is that there is only about 1% of uh, industrial real estate in town. And is as soon as you open that up to residential, and you guys all know this, so I'm, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not educating you, but um, as soon as you open up the industrial zone to residential, the residential uh, business tenants are going to have to compete with those rents. Um, and uh, it, it's not, um, that, that's a difficult situation in, in a town where uh, brand new condos are gonna go for, I don't know, how much money, $800,000. Um, so the idea of putting, uh, opening up this space to, uh, to artists, I fully support um, the arts industry. My business is, we are, we're an independent music distributor. I spend all day, every day speaking to artists and working with artists. So that just, um, that seemed fairly crazy. I, I do appreciate, um, Kristen uh, uh, Canterbury Bagnall's intention here. I think she's got great intentions. I just don't think that this is going to help artists. I think it's gonna have the opposite effect on artists. And I think it's gonna drive business away. I've negotiated um, four long-term uh, commercial leases in the greater Boston area. And um, I know what businesses are looking for. Um, it's not, uh, and I also feel just absolutely um, blessed, so fortunate to be able to uh, run a business in Arlington um, because it's very difficult to find space like this in, in, inside of 128. So that's all that I have to say. I, I just don't, uh, yeah, I appreciate your perspective. Thank you for for sharing it. I didn't mean to speak, by the way. It wasn't my no, 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 no. That's great. I if that helps clarify the where where you're coming from with this. So, um, I'll I'll open it up to the board for um for any any questions. Uh, obviously, this will um come up at town meeting, but just just for the for the board's um edification, any any questions or um, comments that you'd like to make. And we'll start with uh, Jean. Yeah, I, I appreciate your coming and doing this. I know you're you're not alone in having this concern about the industrial zone. Um, I actually think that our proposal is a very good proposal. You know, we're talking about a 21st century industrial zone where you tend to have business and people living together, where artists mixed use space is often mixed in, and I've seen it work very well in Boston. And this is part of a well thought out plan that included the consultants doing some pro formers to see what would it take to really have our industrial zones be a 21st century industrial zone. And these are part of it. And my fear is that if you're, um, amendment substitute motion passes, we will have something on the books that will never end up giving us the industrial zone, the 1% of the land, as you say, that we would have. So I would say we're better off with our motion than with your substitute motion, but I certainly understand where you're coming from. Ms. Jean, uh, Ken, any questions? Uh, Kristen, I know in Somerville they have this artist loft stuff. Um, uh, brick bottom is it the brick bottom building? Are you familiar with that building at all? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm extremely familiar with the brick bottom building. That is not um, one of the buildings that I lived in, but I'm oh. aware of it. But that's the brick bottom building is something different. I mean, that is um, 
Those are condominiums. That that's a development um, that happened. A group of artists got together to make that happen. Um, and and I think that if you wanted to have, I, I think it's a it's a noble um, uh, desire to have to create um, artists living live in workspace in Arlington. But I think that if you want to do that, you are going to have to use, she wants my coconut water. You're going to have to use um, uh, something like a community development corporation to make that happen. Because if you have private developers developing these spaces, there's no mechanism that I'm aware of uh, in place to uh, to protect the interest of the artist, which is to make it affordable. You know, artists are gonna go where it is affordable. And, and actually at the time that I was first looking for artists loft space, Brick Bottom was out of my price range already. I see. I mean, but that was the, that, that was, that started in the eighties. Yeah, I, I realized that. I just was there at the start and I thought right. it was nice. Yeah, it's a wonderful space. I, I know some of the artists there. I've been to events there. That place is awesome. It would be nice to have that here. It would be, you know, I would be in full support of that. But I don't know how you get there with private developers. Well, I'll just say that if, if, if this passes as we've done it, then there's the opportunity to bring in a CDC or something else. But if yours passes, there's no opportunity in the industrial zone to go that way. So this doesn't require artist mixed use. And you're right, maybe the market won't support it, but at least it sets it up so that it can happen. Thanks, Jean. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Melissa, did you have any questions or comments on, on this here? Um. I understand where Kristen Anderson's coming from as well. I this one confuses me a little bit. I'm not as I have looked at some of the um, analysis that RKG did for the industrial uses, and I understand you know the intention to allow for some residential for the purpose of redeveloping, you know, kind of as strategically. And it maybe looked to you know Jenny in terms of the. Um, creating these incentives for the mixed use for artists. Um, what other things have you seen out there that, I mean, where things stand now? I mean, are we with the current, not this substitute motion, but with the current, how are we able to, you know, create those spaces or are the market forces just too much to, you know, create those affordable spaces? For artists specifically or yeah. in general? No, for artists specifically. I mean, um, Kristen referenced the Myrac development. And so that that's a loss of artist studio space, unfortunately, as part of that development. And probably um, it's not a the, the development is not approved yet. So probably but that that is what is likely happening. Um, I've also talked at length with um, Arlington Center for the Arts, the Commission for Arts and Culture. It's a big part of the commission's plan to increase the number of studios in town as well as live workspace. Um, okay. It's part of the Arts and Culture Action Plan. It's something we've talked about. Um, there are no incentives to make it happen, whether it's a private developer or a nonprofit organization, that's still technically private, by the way. <laughs> it's for profit or nonprofit, it's still a private entity and a private developer, by the way, it's still the same thing. One's for profit, one's not. Um, there are various angles to that. There are no opportunities right now. This, the whole intent of this bylaw is to incentivize and find ways to strategically, as you say, allow new development or redevelopment, I think is really the better word. Um, so right. the, the, you know, the, that's the leverage that we put into the amendment. And um, you know, Kristen is proposing to remove this particular portion of the amendment as proposed. Okay. And, and, and all residential. I'm, right. I'm right. No, I understand. Yeah, it's it's true of all residential. Right, right, right. Thank you. Thank you for both of you. Yeah. 
So thank you, Kristen. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to come and explain the, um, the reasoning behind the, the substitute motion. Um, I know that a couple of people have given you their, their feedback as well. Um, I guess Jenny and the board members, are there any other questions? I know that we're running short on, on time. We're, we're gonna need to close pretty soon so that we can move to town meeting. Are there any, any open questions from any of the board members on any of the substitute motions or any of the, um, the, the, the articles? See Jean saying no, no. Ken, no, Melissa. No. Okay. Um, with that, I don't know if we have time really to, to get through the, the meeting minutes, Jenny. So um, we might table those to the next to the next meeting. Um, I, um, if that's the case, if we can't get through them, if people have extensive edits, could you just send them to me so that for the next meeting, which is the same constraint time-wise, we yep. can be ready to just uh, move to approve them, hopefully. Yeah, sure. Well, why don't I do this? Why don't I see if anyone has um, has yeah. amendments or changes to the meeting minutes? Or I'm trying to find my notes where I have mine. <laughs> well, well, Rachel's looking. My only suggestion was there are two or three votes where it had one abstention. It should say who's the person who abstained. Oh, yeah, good so, point. And I know that I have a highlighted sections at the end that I need to fill in so yeah but that that was the only thing that I that I that I saw that mm -hmm. I thought needed to be adjusted okay I can give you mine really quick then and hopefully we can just oh, move all right through them okay so um the first one was on page two um just the way that 521 CMR is is written it doesn't need the hyphens yeah, yeah no I see that thank okay, you great. Um, and then on page five, I had two. Um, the first is on the third line there where I, um, it says at the end of the third line on page five, the chair asked the other board members if there was any risk should the board put in square footage requirements. I believe there I was um, asking if there was any risk if we eliminated um, all of the square footage re requirements because that's where we introduced the the notion that we were going to um, that we were going to eliminate the 6,500 square foot requirement that James had originally as part of his proposal, um, which it does reference later. And then in the third to last paragraph. Actually, nope, that's fine. We're good. That's all I had. Okay. Ken or Melissa, did you have any revisions or comments? Nope. Okay. So I move we accept the minutes with the uh, revisions suggested. Is there a second? Second. Great. We'll take a roll call vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Melissa. Yes. And I'm the yes as well. So the meeting minutes from March 29th, 2021 are approved as amended. Thank you. Uh, any other business of the board before we move to adjourn? We just have to adjourn to town meeting. And um, I, I have a quick question. Does yes. it, if you are, I know that I had to send Rachel the link. Does anybody else need a link if you would like to attend? I, I might want to attend when the okay. zoning articles I'm, are up. I'm not, not sure why you all did not receive your own link. So I'll, I'll forward that to you as soon as we get out of this meeting. I don't need it great. tonight. So. Uh, our, I'm just going to send you the email that has all the links, and then you can choose <laughs> which evenings you would like to join. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Ken, you were saying? No, today's not, none of our amendments are up today, right? No. No, okay. No, Ra Rachel will just deliver the report to town meeting. Okay. Great. So is there a motion to adjourn to town meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Dean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you very much. And I will maybe see some of you in a couple minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good luck.